Hi, I'm Fernando Ferreira from UF Imaging, and today we will take a look into some tools that come in the LVM distribution. We had seen in the previous class that LVM is a number of things. For instance, it's a framework on top of which people can develop compilers and runtime environments for programming languages. But it's also a collection of standalone tools which people can use right away without having to code anything. We had seen in the last class that when we build LVM from source, we obtain binary versions of several tools. Here's the list of those tools. There are many, and we will not look into all of them, of course. Rather, in this class, we will talk about three of these tools. They are Clang, OPT, and LLC. We had seen that a compiler is formed by three parts. Do you remember which parts? We have a front end, a middle end, and a back end. And these three tools occupy each one, one of these slots. Clang is the C front end. It takes a file written in C and produces a file written in the LVM IR. OPT or opt if you prefer, is the middle end and it can transform LL files, usually to optimize them, that is to make them better. But OPT can transform programs with several other purposes, like removing, removing vulnerabilities, instrumenting for profiling, or reducing the size of the binaries. And then we have LLC as the back end. It produces code for different machine architectures. Today, we will look into each one of these tools. Let's start with Clang. Clang is the C front end. That means that it parses C files. Its most common usage is to transform a C file into a program in the LVM IR. However, we can use Clang to analyze C files too. That will be the subject of another class in this course. As an example, let's see how we could transform this program into the LVM IR. This program implements an algorithm called prefixum in a rather inefficient way, but the semantics of this algorithm is immaterial for our course. We just need the code. We can convert this program to the LVM IR with this command. And you will see we are producing a new file. It's conveniently called file.ll, but this name is optional. We can specify any name. That's why we use this flag, minus "-o". It let us specify the name of the output produced by Clang. This other flag, minus "-s", indicates that we are using Clang to produce a file in assembly. In this case, we are producing a file in assembly of x86, for that's the architecture that we are running LVM right now. We can try to visualize the program that we have just produced. This is a text file that you can print or edit using any text editor. So this is a file in x86 assembly as I had said before. You can see the x86 registers like EAX and RDI for instance. If you want to produce instead a file in the LVM IR you can pass the clang this flag minus emit LVM. Don't worry about understanding what is the IR. We will talk more about it later in this course. For now, just imagine that this is another kind of assembly format with instructions, variables, function names, and such. Something important to notice is that Clang is a front-end for LVM, meaning that it takes a program in source format and produces the LVM IR. However, many more front-ends for LVM exist. For instance, for Rust, we have Rust-C, which converts Rust programs into the LVM IR. We have also the Julia repo, which also uses an LVM front-end to convert Julia programs into the LVM IR. Or we have the Swift front-end that works for the Swift programming language. We have many different front-ends for LVM, 
The main advantage of this design is that by converting a program to the OVM IR, we get all the benefits from the OVM uh, framework. In particular, we get all the support from the OVM middle end with all its analysis and optimizations. In our case, the middle end is represented by a tool called OPT. For instance, here we are using OPT to convert the OVM assembly file into a format called DOT, or DOT if you prefer. DOT is a format to represent graphs. You can visualize these graphs using different tools. For instance, in OSX, you can use GraphZ to visualize DOT files. As an example, this is the graph that we obtain for this program. Don't worry about understanding what this graph represents. We will have another class to discuss more about the LVMIR, as I had already mentioned, and then we will understand what this program's control flow graph. For now, it suffices to understand that this graph represents a data structure that the compiler uses to analyze and optimize the program. This data structure shows all the instructions that form the program and all the possible sequences of instructions that can be executed. But that's something for later. Anyways, this data structure, or a representation of it, will um, be the, what we forward to our backend. The backend is the part of the compiler that produces machine code. In our case, the backend is called LLC. This tool will map a program in the OVM IR into something that, belo that belongs to the target architecture. LLVM has many backends. Each one targets a different architecture. I'm listing a few here, but there are many more. To see which architectures are available in your distribution, simply type LLC minus minus version. I bet you will see a rather long list of targets. If you want to produce an assembly file for any of those targets, just specify it using this flag minus M arc. For instance, here we are producing an assembly file in the x86 format but we could have used any other format. For instance, here we are producing an ARM file. And that closes our overview of the three main LVM tools that we shall be using along this course, Clang, LPT, and LLC. In the next class, we will talk a bit about the LVM intermediate representation.